this is the agenda for today. And as you can see, I will touch upon both our commercialization as well as our research and development. We're not going to watch that video because we simply don't have time. So short about oncopeptides, we were founded back in 2000. We are today around 80 employees working for the company. We have our headquarters in Stockholm. We have a research facility in Solna, but we are growing across Europe where we are commercializing our first, first peptide drug, Conjugate Pepaxti, uh, which we do have a full approval for in Europe. We listed on Nasdaq since 2017, and we are working with partnerships outside of Europe. So currently we have partnerships for named patient sales with the World Orphan Drug Alliance, and we also have a licensing deal signed with SE Bio for South Korea. And I will tell more about future plans. We also have a pipeline with two different platforms that I will talk more about. So if we look at where we stand currently, we are still in early days on our commercialization journey in Europe. Uh, and uh, the last quarter, we had sales of 8.5 million sec versus 2.5 million sec last year. Our aim is to become cash flow positive towards the end of 2026. And uh, recent announcements is that we've initiated a real world study in Germany. It's the first study on our uh, indicated target population as we had a subgroup finding in our clinical development program. So it's quite exciting. We also then announced this licensing deal with South Korea. If we look at our equity case, so PEPAXD is addressing a high unmet need in multiple myeloma, which is an incurable disease. We're looking at an expanding marketing opportunity of 1.5 billion sec for Europe alone. We have a full approval with no marketing conditions in a late stage population and our launch is ongoing. We've started to sell in Germany, Austria, Spain and Greece and we're negotiating prices and looking to get market access across Europe. And we are looking at a highly profitable business taking us to profitability towards end of 2026. And Pepaxi is the first PDC, and as you will see, we have a platform of drugs uh, with opportunity for multiple indications and disease areas. So if you just zoom in on how our launch is going, uh, as you can see, we have a clear positive trend, uh, which is due to that we are addressing a high unmet need. We uh, started to build as we got the approval based on the history of the company. That is when we had finances enough to really initiate the launch. And today we then have managed to negotiate a price in Germany. We have price in Austria and in Spain and Italy is progressing according to plan. And Germany, Spain and Italy are the three markets that can alone with some support from, from Austria and Greece take us to profitability. We've also started to get national guideline updates, which is supporting us generating awareness and, of course, advocacy. And I think the best of all, and why I feel so confident in our launch, is because I can see we have a product that really supports patients. So, and I will tell you more about the mechanism of action and how it works, but the feedback we get is basically never disappointment, but positive surprise on how tolerable uh, clinical meaningful efficacy and what a good quality of life uh, these late stage patients get with our drug. Uh, towards the second half of this year, we will start to see sales pick up in Spain because we are just gaining regional access. We have 80% of the country currently. Uh, and of course, continue to uh, generate sales in Germany, which always is a slow market or commonly is a slow market in rare disease because it's very scattered. But again, the feedback is good and the potential is there. And in this delicate phase of starting to gain uptake as we are building, we are of course very focused on being cost effective and ensuring that we manage our cost base through this period of time. So if we look at oncopeptide's potential, Pepaxti is the first launch of the company and we're building from that. So we see Pepaxti as the proof of concept for the PDCs and for oncopeptides to enter into this commercial phase. And we are doing that currently alone in Europe, but we, as I already mentioned, are looking for uh, partnerships in the rest of the world and we are very focused on China and Japan currently. 
And we also have a promising pipeline assets for the future. Just to give you more of a detailed overview on our progress in Europe. So we divided Europe into different launch phases to ensure that we are moving uh, with a sound pricing, pricing strategy and approach. And we are moving according to our plan where we have uh, negotiated the price at the level which is around 7,000 euros in Germany that we uh, were targeting. And then uh, Austria and Spain has uh, followed. And uh, we are uh, in this process now in multiple countries. And if I move to the map, you can see that we are currently then negotiating also in Norway and in Italy. And we are in the cost effective benefit discussions in Netherlands, Ireland and France. In Sweden, where we of course want to support patients, it has a low potential. But here we are uh, bound to seek for regional access as we are not up for national, the national reimbursement process and that we're working on as well. If we look at further commercialization outside of Europe, we have, and I think you know, the speaker before uh, lunch said it very well, we have realized that we are, do not have the muscles, the competence, nor the network to launch in other parts of the world, and that's where we are looking for partnerships. And I realized that the map actually disappeared. So I simply, you simply have to visualize the word map and then you will see <laughs> that in China and Japan, we are very focused on, for China, we're looking at the managers access program that we talked about before lunch. We're also looking at the further then seeking a licensing deal. And for Japan, uh, we're looking at the licensing deal. And then we have decided for geographies where it's not that straightforward, where we don't have clinical experience. We have partnered up with the World Wolf and Drug Alliance, who is an alliance of small uh, companies that are specialized in rare disease and specialized in the named sales pathway. As we are working with an incurable disease, that you can see here, where the patients go through multiple lines of treatment and where eventually the treatment options diminish. And we target this late stage segment where we believe we can take a strong stake, and I will tell you soon why. Uh, there is an opportunity to sell for out of pocket or through insurance or named patient sales pathways across the globe. And we're starting there to see the demand in, for example, Middle East, North Africa, Africa, Eurasia. And should we see a demand, the um, uh, unmet need that is being addressed, the clinical experience will support us to gain regulatory approvals. Uh, but we are, our strategy is really to focus on this uh, late stage to uh, have a strong, take a strong stake there. And that's because that is where all the experts agree there is a high unmet need and where we can make a real difference. And when you commercialize and invest, you have to do that soundly. And this is the space where the investment is at a level where we can see a really highly profitable business. Um, so, what is, what is it then that we're launching? What is the PDC and what is Pepaxti? It's Swedish innovation and it's basically conjugating peptides to a cytotoxic payload, making it lipophilic and then it passively diffuses into the cell. This means that we overcome a lot of resistance mechanisms and we don't, we don't need to rely on a specific receptor. Inside of the cell, there are certain peptidases and esterases that are upgraded in certain tumor types, such as multiple myeloma, that are hydrolyzing uh, the compound, and then the cytotoxic payload becomes hydrophilic and released more than entrapped inside of the cell and can very effectively damage the DNA. Given that this happens very rapidly, we get the concentration gradient where more drug is then pulled into the sick cells. So there are multiple mechanisms ensuring that you get a very high cytotoxic payload inside of the cells and targeting the sick cells. And this is then translated into clinic and that's, I can see it with my own eyes every day when I see how we treat patients and the feedback we get that these patients have been through a lot of different therapies. They need efficacy, they need something powerful. Commonly, they need something that is not immunotherapy because their immune system is starting to get exhausted. But they can't get conventional cytotoxics because they can't tolerate it. 
And that's the beauty then of Pepaxti, where they get the tolerable cytotoxic uh, uh, efficacy. And uh, that is then translated into maintained or even improved quality of life, which is what these patients are looking for because they know they don't have many years left to live. Looking at the landscape and while we are focused on the fourth line and beyond, it's a very evolving landscape. Those of you who know anything about multiple myeloma knows that it's crowded. And uh, uh, that there are three standard classes of drugs in the early lines of treatment that should be used ahead of PEPAXD. And there, there has been multiple um, types of immunotherapy launched that into the late line uh, setting, but they are moving up front because that is where they can make the best difference. So uh, in the fourth line, there is only rechallenge and PEPAXD left, basically. So I can see that my time is running, so I will briefly touch up on our pipeline before we open up for Q&A. So we have two different platforms. Uh, we have a spike platform, which is small polypeptide-based innate killer engagers, that are uh, where we have just selected our first uh, candidate drug. And we also have further development of PDCs. And in the PDC space, we have OPD5, which is a sister drug to PEPAXD, meaning that now when we have a proof of concept, we have really kind of a, a learning experience from the previous clinical development. We can target other geographies like the US, we can target other indications, like for example, amyloidosis, AML, uh, but also multiple myeloma in the US. We also have OPDC3, which is building upon the benefits of capacity and we have a new alkylating payload and enhanced selectivity with this drug. And as I can see that I'm over time, I will actually stop there and open up for a Q&A. Thank you so much, Sophia. <laughs> so people want to know about uh, some countries. If we start with South Korea, what do you have for expectations on the market there? So when it comes to um, multiple myeloma, which is what we're targeting then, of course, in South Korea, uh, is a disease of the elderly. The Korean population is uh, becoming older and older. It's one of these countries where you really see aging is, is uh, growing. So um, if you look at the market potential, it depends on what indication we would get. And our partner is currently into having a pre-review with the regulatory authorities. Once we get the regulatory authorities' feedback on what type of indication we could get, we will know it better. But for now, based on current uh, population size, etc., the assumption is 150 to 300 million sec per year. Mm. Mm. You uh, mentioned Germany as well as other countries in Europe, and if I understand you correctly, Germany is your top priority. How will you accelerate sales there? Uh, so, when it comes to Germany, it's very scattered. We have 2,500 patients being treated by 2,000 physicians. So then you realize that every single physician sees quite few patients each. So the trick in Germany is to gain clinical experience and to get the key opinion leaders to recommend your drug to their peers and to get the physicians to recommend the drug to each other. And that is what we are working on. And we can see in our Q3 report, if you want, it's on our website, so you can have a look at it. There I show the graph on how territories take off when you start to get this peer-to-peer -peer recommendation. Mm -hmm. So we currently have three out of, of uh, uh, approximately 10 territories that has taken off. And we are working, of course, to see more. And we are getting started. Mm -hmm. Do you have the same strategy in Spain? or something, how does that look? So Spain is a bit different. In, in essence, it's the same strategy because this drug is basically sold on the experience. So it is again peer-to-peer. -peer. The difference in Spain is that we did have clinical experience from before. We ran our clinical trials, we had the KOL support. So we can see in Spain that it's much faster uptake compared to Germany. So even if it's the same strategy with a more centralized market and better clinical experience from start, it's of course a different dynamic in the market. Nice. That is the time we have for you today, Sophia, but you will stay along if somebody wants to follow up with some of their questions. Sure. Great. Thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>